Hey everyone, this is Gary Kay, and I'm excited to be joined with Dave Labuska, CEO of Avixa. Dave, how are you? Excellent, Gary. Always good to see you. Well, you are a, um, a beacon of light, in my opinion, in the industry. Your message uh, a couple of weeks ago at your own uh, uh, Infocom Connected was awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, what a great event. I mean, uh, and you pulled it off in a very short period of time. You think you basically can't, had to cancel the show and then pull this entire event all together in about eight weeks. Yeah, it was, um, uh, it was an amazing experience. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a real example of learning what's possible if you just decide that nothing is impossible. Um, I think you, you did your launch event in mid-April, and I think you had mentioned that you had been working on it for about a year. Um, over and we're, over and, a year. <laughs> and, and we're doing it early uh, because of COVID. Um, we, you know, we certainly were looking at contingencies prior to the cancelers canceling the Vegas show, but we had, we had nothing in place and um, went from concept to delivery in two months. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was uh, a great event. And I would encourage everyone, there's a link in the description of this podcast. I encourage everyone, if, even if you did not attend, and I think a lot of people don't know this, Dave, you can actually go and attend now through August uh, 21st, I believe it is, right? Yeah, um, that's, part of the, that's part of the magic of virtual, right, is that the um, content can stay. Uh, and then, you know, the content uh, may very well live after August 21st on our webpage in various different places. But um, the show experience itself, you can go on today. Uh, we have had a couple thousand people went on last week uh, after the show was over. Um, the, it um, gives you an opportunity to still engage with and set up uh, meetings with uh, exhibitors and mm -hmm. see their videos, et cetera. Um, you know, it, it, the content itself and the value of the content is, is great. It, what was surprising to me uh, was the uh, actual community that existed online during those three days. Uh, it was reminiscent of some of the chat rooms from the late 80s, early <laughs> 90s. Um, but uh, I found myself, I don't know if you experienced it or not, but I found myself quote unquote running to get to a session so that I could interact with the people that were there in the audience. Um, the, the ability to ask questions and upvote those questions and then have them live answered, I think also made it uh, really interactive. And it made, you know, some of the uh, speakers that were, uh, did it, uh, were taped, uh, were, were, were uh, recorded, um, they were still there live to interact with the audience and answer questions. So yeah. it, it was good. It was yeah, really good. I'm talking to Dave Labuska, CEO of Avixa. Um, and uh, yeah, and so you can actually go to the, the Infocom Connected website. Um, I don't know that you're off the top of my head and I should have written it down before we started this, but I'll put the link in the description of this podcast and, uh, and, and register. Even if you did not register before, go watch the content. Um, we actually, I'll attach also an article of our favorite sessions, uh, but I would not limit your watching to just those sessions. Certainly, you should start with your own uh, keynote, which I want to talk about. Uh, Dave, because I think a lot of people, you know, you are sort of a, um, as I mentioned uh, early on, I mean, I think you are sort of a guiding light, guiding light for the industry. Everybody's sort of turning to not only Avixa, but to Dave because of the position that you're in uh, to tell us kind of what to do because, you know, everybody's been kind of scared, nervous, confused, frustrated. And I think you've gone through the same sets of emotions yourself, both personally and professionally but you delivered a great message at the keynote. So talk about some of the, some of the takeaways and, and, uh, and where you think we are right now as an industry. Well, yeah, I think uh, the, there has been a, a decade of um, reactions in the last three months uh, <laughs> for all of us. Um, yeah. I, I made a comment, somebody had shared with me uh, at the outset of this, that there are, there are decades where very little happens and there are weeks where decades happen. And this has certainly been a series of weeks where decades have been happening. Uh, internally within my staff, I've um, uh, worked and, and probably they're sick of hearing me say it, but that we're, we're planning and executing and operating in, quarter, in quarters. 
Um, so, you know, if you think of a quarter as a year, then a week is a month. Mm-hmm. And um, that gives you about as far as your visibility can go from a business yeah. perspective. Um, and it also reminds you of the pace that you need to move at in this type of a situation. Um, that all said, uh, our industry is about connecting people with the use of technology and enhancing and delivering experiences. Um, and this, this, is, this is a period of time where we truly can bring solutions that will help the world. Um, the, the connectivity that you and I are having right now the, well, it's been fun for me watching um, the evolution of Zoom, uh, mm-hmm. not, the, not the platform, but the users, right? Um, people have all more or less started to figure out that they need good lighting, they need an appropriate background, they need uh, a headset, they need um, audio to be at a high quality. And so you watched it move from um, working too pleasant. People started setting their scene. People upgraded the various different components of it to deliver an experience. And that's what we've been talking about as AV for for years. Um, As people go back into the workforce and the workplace, I think think for every um, restriction that we have, we also have opportunities. Um, what's, to, what's to say that the dividers in a uh, bar to keep people socially distant aren't movable, transparent LED screens that you can personalize and customize and with an app from your phone yeah. to, to put the rave agency logo on it um, while you're sitting there. And then I come in and I put the Evixer, or I put Hey, I'm Dave. I'm from Virginia. When I'm sitting in a bar in London, um, there are there are opportunities for us to engage each other, leveraging technology. That it is it is the opportunity um, that comes from crisis. Um, so that that's one part of it. So I I, I think there's great hope. I I, I mean mm-hmm. the the uh, the amount of collaboration space in the enterprise uh, it is going to go astronomically up. Um, the types of space are going to change dramatically. And that's all work for our industry. Right. I mean, it's, it's technology that's interestingly enough through this crisis, everything's been solved with technology. Every step of the way, everything's been solved. I mean, the data is coming through technology the signage is coming through technology, the, the UCC, the collaboration platforms are based on technology. We're kind of sitting in a very good position to really help the world, which we have been doing. We've been talking about, I mean, I think you changed, you rebranded to the Audiovisual Integrated Experience Association a few years ago. And ironically, it fits right in place where we are today because ultimately where we are, we are the ones solving the problems for getting back to work. We're the ones solving the problems to get back to the bars and get back to the restaurants and do it safely and then inform people, make sure there's not too many people in one space. Uh, I think people have to, you're correct, that people have to pivot. They can't just say, well, I'm I'm waiting for the industry to come back. They have to pivot and think about using technology a different way. I think your your analysis or analogy of how to use LEDs is just one example of many uh, that, that, that allow you to pivot. Yeah, I, I mean, I, how, how many times a day do you participate in a conversation where somebody says, I just can't wait until it gets back to normal, right? Well, it's, it's just not. It's not yeah. going to get back to normal. And so um, if, if you don't look at the new environment and look at your business model and identify what needs to change, then I can't imagine your business is going to be resilient through this. Um, I, I've commented before that none of us are working for the same company that we were working for on January 1st. We may all still be getting a paycheck, and sadly, many of us are not. Um, but the company itself, if it hasn't already changed, will need to change. Uh, the environment's different. The ec- economic environment's going to be different. Um, and the, the cultural and social expectations are going to be different. I mean, we see this in our shows, right? Yeah. Obviously, I mean, the fact that we had Infocom connected um, was it great? Yes. Was it an 
a heroic effort by my staff? Absolutely. Was the um, contributions from the content uh, contributors was fantastic. And as, none of it was just sort of take it out of the box. It was going to be in room LC224 North and put it on screen. It was it was imagined and built for the Infocom connected experience. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't going to Vegas. It wasn't, right. it wasn't being together. Um, so, you know, we're, we're anxiously looking forward to ISC and Barcelona. Uh, we're working on a daily basis with the FIRA there to work through how do we deliver a safe in-person event and what is it that we're going to uh, what is it that the um, attendees are and exhibitors are going to want out of that event and it's not going to be what they wanted out of Amsterdam yep. last year and not just because of COVID but because their expectations have changed their needs right. have changed the marketplace has changed yeah and and and, and there's going to be some things that you have no control over, which is sort of the mindset of the person who's nervous about going to a big event. Because, you know, IC is an amazing uh, event, but it's also a very big event with lots of people. So I think even even the show management will have to rethink the way that they do everything, like crowd flow. Although you, you kind of have given it, you're sort of been given a gift a little bit because you're changing, you're going to a new venue for the first time. So there's no preconceived expectations of how everything was supposed to operate. So you get to change it and say, well, this is just the way it is for safety's sake. And I'm confident, I've been reading all about all the, the things the Fiera, the Convention Center, Barcelona has been doing. Mike and his team at, I, at Integrated Systems Europe, what they've done. I'm confident that I'm excited to go to that show. I mean, like I love the virtual events, but I definitely love the in-person events a lot better. You did mention, a th you brought up the, you know, unfortunately some people don't have work and we have had some layoffs. You've done a, uh, VIX has done a phenomenal job on a weekly basis and I believe it's going to go monthly now tracking the impact of COVID-19 on our industry. But things are starting to turn back around now. Aren't we starting to see things kind of lift back up? Yeah, I mean, overall, the, we, we can both have an uninformed and, uh, you know, uh, and an uninformed debate about whether it's going to be a W or a V or a swoop or a, or a U recovery. Uh, but people, some people are back to work. Um, some meetings are starting to take place. Um, some, some of our um, integrators uh, have been busy throughout, depending on the mm -hmm. verticals that they work within, uh, their access to it. Um, but yes, uh, there, there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope. And, and as I said, as, as the economy gets going again, um, the first place that every enterprise is going to be looking at is how do I most effectively rework my space? How do I get this space to be an effective uh, adjunct to work from home? Uh, what is it that people will come to the office for at this time? So, yeah, I mean, I mean it, it absolutely is all it's all going to get better from where it was because yeah. everything stopped. Right. Yeah. So you, you set the bar pretty low there. Um, <laughs> and and, you know, the recovery to that, uh, you know, my first my literally my first day on the job in this position, um, John Fuchs looked at me and said, industry associations exist to do that which no one business can do by themselves or would do by themselves right and that's that's where certification comes from that's where education comes from that i know you've been a big part of for your entire career that's where um the the infocom connected kind of experience comes from um this this was a time where we were clearly needed by the industry. We just needed to do everything we could. It was the reason we exist. Um, I talked to my staff about it at the outset. I'm like, we have, we have three, three overlapping areas of focus that we need to keep through these next three months, this next year, if you remember mm -hmm. my a quarter yeah. is a year. Um, on one hand is our employees' welfare. On another hand is financially viable stay in business and the third is our members needs um and i was so proud of the the creativity if you look 
I think we did more webinars and more um, quick panel discussions, ask anything discussions in more languages in the past four months than we probably had done in the last four years. Um, and, and they were organic. Um, a program and, you, and you made started. a whole bunch of education free and easily accessible, like almost right away within a week or two of, of kind of everything happening. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you oh, made a lot of education available, which is really, if you don't have anything to do, that's really what you should be doing, which is another reason to go back to Infocom Connected because you get the CTS certification, plus you get the education, plus you get the diversity of opinions of, from around the world as to how people are dealing with this. Yeah, and it was exciting. I mean, so just raw numbers. I mean, we had tens of thousands of courses that were taken. Um, the first day we announced that it was free, our um, our registration system got crushed because we're used to about 800 people registering for classes and we had 4,000 people registering for classes. Um, I forget the numbers. I tweeted them out a couple of weeks ago, but there's just hundreds of thousands of lessons that were consumed over this time frame. Um, it's also the accessibility to it, right? Same thing yeah. as um, people's grandparents using Zoom to talk to family. There are parts of the world where taking a course online just wasn't a consideration. You just mm -hmm. didn't do that. And it made it difficult for us to reach uh, and scale the development of the industry. And again, because there was no choice, those barriers have been banished. And people now are more comfortable with and willing to accept it. Um, we're providing, we, we've been providing distance learning. We completely um, redesigned the CTS, the design prep course, the installation course that normally we're flying instructors around the world to teach and employers are flying students around to attend that we've been able to deliver very successfully in a distance learning format, just like every higher education facility has had to learn to do. Um, yeah. There's the thing, the thing that we need to recognize in the worst of these times is this too shall pass. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so let's use this time to identify what truly delivers value to your customers. What is it that they truly want? And, and don't allow don't allow yourself to be lazy. Like, so here's one that I, um, I'm, I'm challenging these days is, well, people want to get together because they want to network. Well, that's a, that's a lazy term, right? What do they really want to get together for? Do they want to get together to sell you something? Do they want to get together to learn? Do they want to get together to meet a new friend because they're lonely? Do they want to get a new job? Um, there's, there's something below networking. And if we promote live events as networking events, that's, that's not going to be good enough. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to be more explicit in the value we're delivering to have people come. And then you mentioned it, and, and, and it, it's at the underscoring of everything now, is um, the safety. If an attendee doesn't anticipate that they will be safe, they will not go that yep. just straight out right yeah that was the challenge we had in um after 9 11 is people didn't yep. feel safe getting on an airplane and until they felt safe they didn't and that's that's smart right don't do yeah. something that you put you in danger um right and we, we don't have any control over that but we do have control over still getting the experience uh if so you do feel safe so you can do it at home or you can do it at work work from anywhere um, I have also another take on this uh, I'd love to share with you. Having taught uh, for the last three years, and you have a son who's a jet part of Generation Z, um, they think and act differently than any other generation before. I taught, I spent eight years teaching millennials. I spent the last three years teaching Generation Z. And I wrote an article some two or three years ago, three or four years ago, saying, I'm amazed at how different Generation Z is than millennials. It's almost like a big chop. Sorry, I hit my own microphone. Almost like it chopped and there was a difference between the two. And, and what just happened with COVID allows us to serve millennial or Generation Z 
and accommodate Generation Z much quicker because they were sort of like looking at our, we look at our industry as like the pinnacle of technology and my kids looked at our industry as like five years behind technology. And all of a sudden now we're doing what they were saying we should have been doing all along, which is like my daughter would say, why are you flying all the way to Amsterdam when you could go online and see all this stuff? And that's kind of an interesting thought because that for them, and I'm not saying that they will replace, I, I do think they still want the experiences. But for them, they want access however they want access. And part of that is an Infocom connected or virtual education or making content available. And also this platform, you know, like you and I have to feel like this is the same as having an in-person meeting. And four years ago, we didn't look at this as the same as having an in-person meeting. But now we recognize it is, especially to Generation Z. Yeah, uh, we can... So my son's going back to Berkeley for his master's degree in the fall. Um, and he's, you know, he finished his bachelor's degree here in his bedroom upstairs. Right. Yeah. Um, the, and in talking to him about um, Berkeley and like many universities is going to allow you to either be on campus or remote. Right. Um, they're going to teach most of the classes uh, remote, whether you're on campus or not. Um, he, he's he been focused in on the small labs and experiences and saying, actually, if they don't open to deliver that, he may not go back for the mm -hmm. master's now because not having hands-on access and uh, the learning environment that you get from a laboratory um, means that he's not going to get the learning that he wants associated with this degree investment. Um, so there's a, that's one where it's, it's more than just being with other uh, students. Mm -hmm. It's about a very specific need that he has that they need to deliver on, or he's not going to consume it from them. Right. He's not, he's not concerned about the lectures. He's not concerned about the large sure. sessions. Um, but yes, the, so there's a differentiation there. And then, you know, we have to be careful about being homogenous in our discussions on generations, right? Yeah. There's, you know, there's so many different, um, yeah. I, I'm fighting hard to not say the kids are all different, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, but, but it, you know, it's interesting. Again, we come back to our industry being the industry that can solve these issues. I mean, if you look at what, you know, I don't know if you saw the University of North Carolina where I teach was on 60 Minutes a couple of weeks ago talking about our plan uh, for what we were going to do because we were one of the first universities to announce our plan. So we're going to have a combination of hybrid and high flex. All that's happening because of the ability to purchase a ton of AV gear and put it in really, really quickly. Uh, and, uh, and, and ultimately, it comes down to audio and video, right? It's making those connections because if, if your son does take that class online, you're going to have to have good, going to have to have good audio, not just audio, good audio, and you're going to have to have good video so that you feel connected to the class. Uh, and so that's, but don't hey, forget, by the way, that's what we start with. <laughs> right. But don't forget, right? This is probably you with your, your peers at the university that you, you can have good audio and good video, but if you don't have good content, if you haven't structured oh, yeah. your content in a way where you can deliver it and it's not standing at a podium with a yep. camera on you, um, I remember early on my, my son commenting on the fact that, you know, I said that a lot of what I've understood from the limitation of adoption of this technology is the faculty. The faculty doesn't want oh, to use the technology. Totally. They're intimidated. They push it back. And he laughed and he's like, well, probably some of them shouldn't be using this technology. <laughs> and it's, you know, so there's, that's that back to the, you know, it's content space and technology, you know. We, you have to get the technology right. If you have brilliant, engaging content that can't be heard or can't be seen, then, then it's a, you, you can't, you, it's a no start. Yeah. But you cannot solve and deliver the value in this environment ever again without also acknowledging and recognizing content, recognizing yeah. how to deliver in a virtual world. I agree with you 100%. Uh, Dave, I really appreciate you joining me today. Uh, if you, of course, if you want to find out more information, go to avixa.org. I would personally encourage you to get involved with Avixa. Um, you can become a volunteer teacher. You can take class. I mean, right now, a lot of the education is free. You can get involved in, take, in getting a certification, um, the CTS, CTSI, CTSD. 
I would encourage you to come up with a new CTS too, a CTS UCC, <laughs> because I think we need some work there. But, uh, but in any case, I think there's so many opportunities for, for people to be involved in our industry. And, uh, and I, first off, I appreciate not only what you've done, but your team. I've been able to work with a lot of your team over the last, uh, say, 60 or 90 days, and they've been uh, phenomenal and accommodating and helpful and, and also been uplifting because they're not negative on what's going on in the industry. And, and I do see a great opportunity here for us to not only fix a lot of the problems, but also sort of be a beacon to kind of direct uh, you know, some, some of these old professors, they may have great content and they just need coaching on how to do it non-linearly, right? They, mm -hmm. they grew up just teaching linearly, but they haven't been given the opportunity to teach non-linearly. I have a really good cohort where I teach here at UNC who's exactly that. And once I showed him, you know, some of the products uh, that were non-linear products, he was like, I had no idea this existed. I didn't know we could do stuff like this. So sometimes it's a knowledge uh, issue. And I think that's where Avixa comes in. Uh, and of course, ISC is February in Barcelona, switched from Amsterdam to Barcelona. You can go find out more information on that show at I-S-E-U-R-O-P-E dot O-R-G. Uh, Dave, thank you very much today. I really appreciate you joining me and uh, best of luck. Stay safe and enjoy some summer. Thanks, Gary. You too. You too.